here in Lviv, Michael Bosikur, a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and former spokesman for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Michael, it's good to see you here uh, with us. Now, the sanctions which have been proposed that are about to be hit, hit again, the you know, fifth round, I believe, on, on Moscow mm -hmm. and Vladimir Putin, what will they do? Not much. Uh, the sanctions that were announced when the war began did nothing to deter Mr. Putin. I think a lot of these sanctions should have been introduced before the Russian aggression started. But, uh, and I think, uh, you know, I've written a lot for CNN opinion about this. I think um, Russia has been preparing for this for a long time, partially in coordination with China to inoculate itself against these sanctions. A full package would have included also a ban on Russian oil and gas, not just coal. But, of course, that would have caused pain in European countries. But what's better to, you know, take that pain now or to get it later when the Russians could possibly take over all of Ukraine and then they move even to uh, Poland and other parts of Europe. Because that's the point right now. Uh, until the Europeans are willing to bite the bullet, if you like, yeah. end the natural gas imports, 40% of their, their energy needs, uh, those sanctions aren't going to do any, any good. Because what the situation is, the Europeans are paying Putin a billion dollars a day, which is funding his war which seems to negate the sanctions. Exactly. They're, Russia is actually going to make more this year off of energy, even with sanctions, than last year, according to Bloomberg calculations. So, and that money is going to fund this war. And by the way, John, I mean, uh, the figures of casualties here, of deaths here, is in the thousand or so mark. But if you include the past um, eight years, it's about 8,000 uh, deaths on the Ukrainian side in the Donbass. So right. those are high, high numbers. We're also, if you want to talk about fatalities at the moment, we're also looking at very high casualty counts on the Russian side as well. Um, the Ukrainians put it up to, sort of, I think, 18,000 uh, Russian troops have been killed. Um, what sort of impact does that have on Russia, on Vladimir Putin? It's a very inhumane regime. They don't care about human life. We've seen that, what has happened in Bucha. And yeah, those body bags will come home to the mothers in Russia and they will cry and scream. But there are such controls right now in Russia on any sort of dissent, even a hint of dissent, that it's very difficult. Look, we've even heard stories of um, mothers disowning their kids for going on the Ukrainian side on social media mm -hmm. and saying this war shouldn't be happening. So it's causing some sort of destabilization, destabilization in Russia, but not on a massive scale, I think. When you look at what happened in Bucha um, and Opin and Boryaka, these sort of places, how, is that a game changer, if you like? Is it, it, well, at least people thought it might be a game changer yeah. when these atrocities were revealed. But what we're seeing now with this NATO meeting and these sanctions, it hasn't really had the effect that many thought it would have. A lot of uh, rhetoric, a lot of platitudes, sad to say, um, even from my own government, Canada. Um, yes, one would have thought this would have been it, a game changer, but it isn't. And, you know, also what's been happening, we're, we're finding out, is the Russians have been trying to cover their tracks. Uh, things like the Kiev Independent has been reporting mobile crematoriums, that sort of thing, to get rid of the evidence. So it's really, really important right now for Ukraine to move quickly to collect this solid evidence and get um, impartial also third parties here. They've been talking, for example, of getting Angela Merkel here, people like that, to really witness it and document it. But um, uh, sadly, I don't think it'll be a game changer. The fact that they are trying to cover their tracks, destroy the evidence, yeah. It indicates, obviously, they're worried about that, at the very least, right? They are. And, um, you know, i got to say, one of the oddest images I saw is, you know, the bodies in places like Bucha being thrown into these makeshift graves. But also, there are so many Russians killed. Their bodies are also being thrown in there. So what an undignified way to have to be, um, you know, put away for eternity. But I, I think um, there's plenty of evidence out there. You, you will see, as people get out of these liberated cities, they will have cell phone images, things like that, because don't forget, a lot of them were cut off from uh, cell phone service and electricity. I think there's a lot more to come. And when you say about it is important to, to start collecting this evidence uh, for, any, for a future yeah. trial, I guess, yeah. the Russian president doesn't care. You can take him to the ICC. He's, you know, they've been found guilty of you know, MH17, you know, the shooting down of MH17 linked directly to Correct. Putin. Didn't care. Yeah. Why is he going to care about this? He won't. And, uh, you know, with MH17, they haven't given up any suspects or any witnesses. I think at the end of the day, the only leverage that is left for the West is to work on 
China and India, mm. to isolate Russia to the point that it's like a North Korea, and to cut off those energy payment flows. But um, I, I still think there's some leverage there. At least I like to think so with uh, India and with China. Very quickly, India did condemn Bucha, yeah, which is a significant uh, movement on their part. It is, but they have to stop buying uh, Russian energy to cut them off completely. Michael, good point to finish on. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll take a short break.